everyone, James Mansfield here, and you're watching Idol Worship, the show where we salute the friends of Dorothy long after the rainbow has passed. This week, we give our regards to Broadway and salute the original bad girl of the theater, Tallulah Bankhead. Hello, darling. <laughs> Miss Bankhead? Yes? This is Lucy Ricardo. Yes. Born the daughter of a Southern Democratic senator, Tallulah Bankhead was a wild child from the word go. She would often push back against her stuffy family's traditional ideals and would find herself running away to New York to join the blooming theater scene. The story goes, when Tallulah Bankhead was 15 years old, she was entered in a magazine contest where the winner got to receive a free trip to New York and a bit part in a film. Well, Tallulah entered this contest. But Tallulah forgot to put down her contact information and she had won the contest, but she didn't find out at least a few weeks later when she read about it in a magazine. New York was searching for this mystery girl and her senator father submitted an 8x10 of her and a family photo proving the mystery girl was his Tallulah. And from here off to NYC she went. Her natural charm won many influential friends. Why don't you take about 20 or 30 seconds and describe yourself? 30 seconds? <laughs> Gracious. Well, now let me see. If I may be wildly optimistic, I would say that I was the, um, divinely impossible. <laughs> so influential, in fact, by the early 1920s, Tallulah Bankhead was keeping company in some of the most influential ladies. She was known as one of the four writers of Algonquin, a group of high society gals who were also noted lesbians or bisexuals. The ladies were well known for their go hard or go home antics when it came to parties. Tallulah Bankhead became well established for her bon vivant nature. I got good news for you. You're going away. Chirping such memorable quotes as, Cocaine? Addictive? Nonsense. I don't know, I've been doing it for years. You do a revolting imitation of me! <laughs> Tallulah had a natural flamboyance about her that made her perfect for the stage. A quality that would hurt her as an actress in Hollywood. In fact, she was the first choice for Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind. But the director felt she tested poorly in color and was far too old for the part at the age of 36. Tallulah was one of those actresses who would swallow up a film. Her presence was far too big. Her best and most remembered film is Alfred Hitchcock's Lifeboat. Tallulah plays a hard-headed reporter who has her glamour stripped away from her while she tries to survive a shipwreck. Connie, will you keep the ship's log, please? Right, oh, right, oh, providing I control the copyright and all publication rights, including the Scandinavian. <laughs> yes. And Tallulah was still up to her old tricks, even on film sets. One story from the set that got Tallulah in hot water was her tendency to not wear underwear when she'd climb up the ladder to the water tank. It was such a recurring incident that a leader of decency in Hollywood was on set and demanded Alfred Hitchcock make her wear underwear. To which Hitchcock remarked, I wouldn't even know what department it would be in. It could be makeup. It could be costuming. It could be hairdressing. <laughs> Though her film work was scarce, her work on stage flourished. She was known for such sterling and strong performances and plays like The Little Foxes. She also had the misfortune of having her plays become hit vehicles for Betty Davis in Hollywood, causing the public to create a feud around the two. I've just been clamped on the crotch by a copperhead. Betty, quick, before I fall in love. You've got to drive, drive, my darling, and ask the doctor what I'm to do. She was known for taking pot shots at Betty Davis on her radio program, The Big Show. It's often been disputed that All About Eve was based on Tallulah Bankhead, slighting Betty Davis's role as Margot Channing in, oh, that film, yes, All About Me. Of course, I thought, uh, you know who, had a pretty good chance. No, but honestly, and I'm speaking quite sincerely, I honestly consider her one of our finest actresses, and I'm not kidding, darlings. We gave a brilliant performance in that picture. As the 1950s rolled around, Tallulah continued to work as a radio and television personality. <laughs> My good woman, would you kindly leave the premises before I grab your pink hair and put it out by its black roots? <laughs> Straight. Are you asking me to leave? Throwing you out would be more accurate. I ain't been thrown out of better places than this. You have never been in better places than this. <laughs> With her appearances on many game shows at the time, and she even portrayed the Black Widow in the 1968 version of Batman. I'm fair. I never touch spirits. Have you some milk? Milk? Oh, yes, yes, yes. 
So this is milk. And without even trying, she'd always manage to push somebody's buttons, especially if they were stuffy censorship boards. One incident that got to Lou on hot water was when she was a guest star in a play on television where she played the good fairy, but she landed herself in hot water when she kissed a young black girl on the cheek, thus upsetting the sponsor, L'Oreal, who did not want to see African Americans and Caucasians interacting in such a way. Tallulah simply responded to this controversy by stating they were ignorant. Tallulah knew she needed something to revive her career as the 1960s rolled on. It was then she decided to take her act to Vegas. Many critics dismissed Tallulah Bankhood, certain that she would be a flop. However, come opening night at her show at the Sands in Las Vegas, Tallulah became an instant smash and would be a returning act for the next three years. You know I'm practically immortal. Really. There are many speculations as to her lack of film work in the 1960s, even stories coming out about how she was offered the lead role in Whatever Happened to Baby Jane and turned it down, only for Betty Davis to take it. Her last film to date would be the much maligned Die Die My Darling with Stephanie Powers, a notoriously camp film that inspired the play Looped. You touched my purse. I just moved it. Touching a woman's purse is like touching her vagina. <laughs> Of course, I can only fit so much in the purse. The play was based on her making of the film Die, Die, My Darling, where she flubbed a line so badly she had to retake it in a looping session. What are those? Breath mints. <laughs> in a prescription bottle. Codeine happens to be leading the fight against halitosis. She was a dear friend of playwright Tennessee Williams. And many say that some of his greatest characters were based on Salula. Though in the tragic irony, despite Salula's many accomplishments on stage, she only ever appeared in a handful of Tennessees. In her last year, she finally portrayed Blanche Dubois on the stage, the character that was supposedly based so much on Tulula. Much of Tulula's surprise, Williams remarked that Tulula's performance was one of the worst he's ever seen of Blanche Dubois, remarking that Tulula played too much to the audience that wanted to see a lot more of Tulula which distracted her from her performance, which Tallulah agreed with. Tallulah knew how to take criticism and corrected the problem with the stage show from that day on. And come two weeks in, Tallulah had won Tennessee and even brought him to tears with her performance of Blanche. Sadly, life caught up with Tallulah Bankhead and she fell ill in 1968. She died of double pneumonia and passed away. She was 66 years old. Her rumored last word being, coding bourbon ending the party of this legendary lady. Tallulah Bankhead was a flawed individual, but it was her free spirit nature that made us all fall in love with her. She gave no fucks and lived life to its fullest. For many gays at the time, Tallulah Bankhead was an escape in such an oppressive era for LGBT people. And many lived out their fantasies of being a glamorous, carefree woman of high society through Tallulah. The PTA. The PT what? <laughs> Parent-Teachers Association. Oh, yes! <laughs> As a matter of fact, I gave this part in honor of my friend, the Duchess of Marnay. We're very good friends. Well, as a matter of fact, we're not really very good friends. We just know too much about each other. <laughs> She's always the voice you hear whenever you need permission to do something a little naughty. A walking power fantasy. She is an essential viewing for gay camp culture and will always be remembered as the original absolutely fabulous lady. And in closing, if you're ever feeling down, be sure and drop the R out of the word darling. I guarantee you, it'll cheer you up every time. Darling? It's a job they give to me. Making nice guys out of stinkers seems to be my cup of tea. What they really need behind the iron walls is the hostess with the mostest on the ball.